Hi guys and welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. This is a one-take session, no edits, no cuts, about private equity, leverage buyouts, and publicly traded companies. You guys know this series as Connect the Dots. This is part 46. I know, I saw the headline today and I'll show it to you here. This is the press release, the 8K from Highcroft Mining. It's telling you that they're going to do a reverse stock split, and they'll tell you that it's market manipulation, it's you know these shares that are just not worth anything, the short sellers. This is nonsense. I've told you what this was from day one. You know, this happened about over a year ago, year and a half ago, when Adam Aaron came out and said that they were buying into a gold mine, AMC movie theaters, and that this was a great investment for whomever. Alternate assets, this is a great way to invest. And as you know, they've lost every single dollar they ever put in, but they only put the money in because they generated so much money from Mudrick selling shares during the run-up and before. So if you guys don't know the history, I don't want to just speak in general. I want people, if this is the first time ever seeing this video, to understand. AMC Movie Theaters was going bankrupt during the pandemic. They needed money. They diluted their float and sold shares. They did an offering. Mudrick, who is a, dis a distressed credit investor, that's all they do, went ahead and gave them money. And they bought out some shares at a very low price, about $100 million worth, and they came in. Now, they made $100 million, or they made more than that. Whatever, however much money they made, I don't care. That's not the point of the story. The point of the story is they gave money to AMC to survive. Now, when AMC survived and then got the whole crowd behind them, this whole meme stock pumping, Adam Aaron doing interviews, Adam Aaron on TV, what did he do? At the peak of it all, when the stock is running, he diluted the float right back to Mudrick, sold them shares at a price. They sold them and made a profit. And that's the scratch my back, I scratch your back. It got even better a year later when Adam Aaron agreed to buy into Highcroft Mining. And who owns Highcroft Mining? Mudrick Capital. They owned over 50% of the company at the time. And Jason Mudrick is on the board of directors along with numerous other buddies and friends. They've all cashed out. They all cashed out and made millions of dollars of your money, private equity. And why did they do it? They did it because they knew they had you in their bag. They used Twitter, Reddit. They used YouTube. You name it. They pumped these stocks. So this is Highcroft Mining now doing this reverse stock split, telling you, guess what? It's 1 to 10, can't be greater than 25, but it's okay because we're a good company. From the research that I've done on Highcroft Mining, and no, I'm not a mining expert, but I definitely know how to read a balance sheet. They don't mine. They don't make a profit. Whatever you see there is not real money. That's not what it is. They only have two customers. That's it. So as far as you guys getting free NFTs to hold the stock and Dr. Diane Garrett doing interviews with Boss Blunts, that's all manipulation on you. If you've ever seen a meme stock CEO, what do they do? They do the interviews with the public. And for whatever reason, these public YouTubers, what they do. Uh, you know, it's been said Ryan Cohen only did the interview allegedly with uh, GMEDD for a totally different reason. Some people know it, some people don't, but I won't slander them here. I would just tell you guys, be careful what you buy. And that's Highcroft Mining. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it in detail the best way we can. First, let's go to the prospectus here. So this is the first time that this company was going public. If you guys know, I'm increasing the size of this page so you guys can read it just a little. And here are the board of directors, okay? The board of directors for initially when this company went public, you know that they were a bankrupt company. Mudrick Capital teamed up and they were going to bring them public. Now, when Mudrick Capital teamed up and brought them public, I thought this was pretty... Uh, interesting. They actually use the underwriter company of Cantor. Now, Cantor is going to be, um, it's going to be a larger name than that, but I'll have it here. Cantor Fitzgerald. That's who's the underwriter with them. Now, if you guys don't know about Cantor Fitzgerald, it's a pretty sad story. They were on the 100th floor of the 9-11 building, 101st all the way through the 105th floor. Cantor Fitzgerald, every single employee that went to work that day died. 658 employees died. Uh, the CEO, however, did not. The chairman and CEO was not there. His kids started kindergarten and first grade, I believe, or kinder and preschool um, that day, 9-11. So he was late to work. Sure enough, when he showed up to the building, it was on fire already, and everyone died. So <sighs> terrible story, but yes. That's who's the underwriter for this company. I just thought it was um, a story to tell you guys if you guys do not know that. Um, but we'll go forward. Uh, Howard Lutnick is the CEO that survived. He's the sole 
survivor, and he has since struck gold because he struck contracts with the government, and everyone else has helped him, you know, make a ton of money. He's the one who launched a SPAC deal for Rumble. Uh, this is a um, a successful company now, Kenter Fitzgerald. So that's the underwriter for this company, but they're the underwriter for a lot of companies. I can't fault them. We'll talk about Jason Mudrick first. If you guys look right here on this um, on this release, it's going to tell you who the actual board of directors are, and we're going to go down the list of them just so you guys can educate yourself on who Jason Mudrick is. This is Jason Mudrick, okay? And you guys have seen him in a video before that I've done maybe a year and a half ago, a year ago. We're going to watch some of that video today uh, in detail, but uh, let's go ahead and go to Jason Mudrick's little list here. As you can see, Jason Mudrick, uh, he's managed around $3.3 billion. We know most of that was from GameStop's, uh, I believe it was out of money uh, holdings that they had, some uh, options that they had, out of money options, and then AMC, of course, how they made over $200 million there in, in a bulk buy. Um, he's been in charge at Thrive. If you guys don't know Thrive, it's about $18 a stock right now. Got pumped up to 42 and I know he's on the board of directors for that company previously. And when I look at Thrive, I was looking at Gordon Henry. I don't remember why I was looking at all these guys. There was a ton of them, but I was breaking them down, but then I went here. So this is going to be Thrive. This is Heather at Thrive. Remember, he's on the board of directors here, and he had been for a long time. I think he's already out now because I couldn't find him again. But remember, Jason hides in the background. But Heather, if you don't know who she is, uh, she is a consultant for the Boston Consulting Group. Okay, so that's uh, that's pretty telling who he's working with, uh, the Boston Consulting Group type of uh, individuals. Next is Ryan O'Hara. If you look at Ryan here, he was um, also at a publicly traded company called Shutterfly. If you know Shutterfly, if you don't know Shutterfly, that was Connect the Dots Part 4 or 5. One of those episodes, I did it all on Shutterfly, Apollo, those are the ties. What are the chances he's there? Another employee on the board of directors is this young man. He works for iTrade Network. And I believe that I was going to connect that because it was a company called KKR, but it was a different KKR that bottom from Roper Technology. So ignore that guy. When I look here, it's going to tell you that contrarian capital management, okay? That's very telling. Contrarian capital management is the former, is the, is the main um, hedge fund that he used to work for, okay? All of them. They all used to work for contrarian capital management. That's where they started. But if you know he left, and he left in a hurry, and the reason why he left is because this individual here, by the name of Lawrence Herzing, he was 45 years old, was arrested and uh, sent to prison for four years for embezzling $9.2 million during that same time frame when they worked there, when all those people worked there. So he was embezzling money. Chances are, who knew about it? I don't know, Jason, if Jason knew about it. But I'd like for people to know that's what went down. Another company he worked for that he was on the board of directors for is right here. It's called um, Affinian Group. And, of course, they have ties to J.P. Morgan. Uh, they were bought out by J.P. Morgan. So I just went down every single company that he's touched. And when I looked at all these companies at the bottom, it got worse and worse for me and for him. I looked right here. Castaneda Partners bought out the, I don't even know how to say this guy, Proneza Scholar, Scholar, whatever it may be. But Castaneda Partners doesn't exist anymore. But the board of directors for them, for this company, is all, it's all these guys right here. Okay, All these guys right here are the ones that are at this company. Now, if you guys don't believe that, that your boy's there, Jason Mudrick, and I don't want to say your boy because I know a lot of you guys don't like him. I don't like him. But right here, it's going to tell you that he was on the board of directors for that company that we just talked about. I can't remember where, if it was on here or on here. It's on here. So he's on the board of directors right here. So he's on the board of directors for that company, the, the modeling company, whatever, the uh, apparel company. And I saw all of these companies that he's on the board of directors for, okay, that Jason's on. But when you see this right here, that he's actually partnered up with Ron Frash, uh, I'll show you exactly what's going down, okay? So first, Ron Frash, if you guys don't see him, he's still at the board of directors of Crocs. Remember we talked about Crocs and their partnerships? Uh, this individual additionally was working with Neiman Marcus. We know we talked about them on the private equity front on uh, part 17. Hudson Bay Company, Saks Fifth. Uh, this guy's been with all the companies you want to look at, okay? So this is private equity, Castaneda Partners, and Ronald Frash. 
Next is going to be Rosie Marie Bravo. Rosie Marie Bravo, same thing. She's on that board of directors for that company. Additionally, she comes from, I believe it was Macy's originally, if I'm not mistaken, when she first started, uh, right here. And you'll see it right here. 1971 to 1974, she's recruited by Macy's when Macy's was bought. And of course, all the way through the bankruptcy of Macy's. So you know how I feel about people that came from that time frame. If they're still working today, private equity ties. John Howard, another board of directors right there, working hand-in-hand -hand with Jason Mudrick. This guy works for Irving Place Capital and Westray Capital Corporation. If you don't know who they are and what they are, those are big companies. Just so that we're clear, Aeropostal, one of the, um, one of the mall stocks is where he was at before. Additionally, the other company was the Vitamin Shop all the way at the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see it because my head might be in the way. But when you look at Westray, and they are Caddington Partners. That is who they are right now. I know that you've seen multiple deals with them. That's why I'm, I'm suspect to it in a way. I know it's private equity. I know where it sits. I know Simmons & Company was also one of their accounts, Avis Renicar. So I'm paying attention to the fact that they were Bear Stearns. Irving Place was Bear Stearns before they went under. But just so that we're clear, Castaneda Partners, the ones that were on the board of directors with Jason Mudrick, uh, fell apart. And they fell apart uh, in detail here. It tells you that everyone packed up and took off and made different firms. And as they made their different firms, and I just want to make sure I see it right here. Check this. This is awesome, guys. Betsy Johnson was one of their accounts, 2007. Okay. The next one you want to see is this, the brand Ip uh, Ipatola, whatever, I don't even know how to say it, okay, Polita, Ipolita, boom. And then, of course, the Prozenera Sh Scholler, the one I just talk talked to you about. So there's three groups, and then, of course, they were all with Neiman Marcus. But do you see those three companies there by Castaneda? I want to show you guys something. You guys want to call me crazy and tell me that they don't plant people on boards? Let's go ahead and look at Jonathan Friedman. Jonathan Friedman is a CFO for Pro, uh, how do you say this? Proenza Scholler? Okay, so he is the CFO for that company. Just so happens he's also the chief operating officer, right here, financial officer for um, Ipolota. Pelota. Really? Their other company that they owned, Castaneda. Oh, Betsy Johnson. They went bankrupt. They owned that too. And then you go down, Model Sporting Goods, gone bankrupt, and then, of course, Toys R Us. Hey, but private equity doesn't get planted onto boards. No, they just go around looking for jobs, and they just happen to get hired by the same company every single time. The one hedge fund that has been in control of all of those companies, and all those companies have gone bankrupt, but yet this guy gets a job at it. I just want you to know it's more than a coincidence. Another company that he was part of, Jason Mudrick, was... Uh, what is this? Uh, Filled Wood Energy emerges from Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Of course, they're always going bankrupt. Enjoy. If you guys don't know, he talked about this one in the interview when he was talking about Mudrick initially. Enjoy is a cigarette company. It was bought out by the Anheuser-Busch parent company, which is this Alteria Group. Actually, that's going to be the Philip Morris parent company. But the CEO of Philip Morris is on the board of directors of Anheuser-Busch, which is private equity. That's what I wanted to tell you and Elizabeth Bailey, who was a professor at the Wharton School. So now they're just putting teachers at the Wharton way, right? They're just putting them on the board of directors. And I don't mean to speak ill of her because she has since passed last year. Uh, Martin Bar Barrington, this guy right here, he literally is the chairman of the board for, and he's on the board of directors over there at Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch. Uh, RJ Nabisco board right here, Deborah Enos. Yep, you know these deals, guys, and you know how they're still here. So I'm just showing you that there's connections to every company that he's ever touched, Jason Mudrick. Additionally, he was on this one, the safety decline, and they revived their IPO, private equity backed, and who backed it? J.P. Morgan was the underwriter, and you'll see it right here. It tells you J.P. Morgan Chase was on the deal along with Contrarian Capital. So yes, like I told you, Contrarian Capital J.P. Morgan, they've all done deals together, and that is Mudrick. When I looked at Mudrick's board of directors, guys, everyone was in there. There's people who worked for Apollo, people that worked for Carlisle Group right here. Lisa worked for Apollo. Uh, different ones worked for um, other private equity firms. Blackstone, I saw Carlisle. I saw a lot of people in here. Okay, So they're, they're just riddled with private equity because they are private equity. But here's the crazy part. You guys ready for a crazy one? I'll give you one right here. So... If you guys remember this guy, this is David Kirsch, okay? And this is his wife, Danielle uh, Stahl, 
But David Kirsch, and I, and I called him out when I saw him on the screen. I said, this guy looks like a stock bro. This guy looks like someone you would never give money to. He looks like an absolute crook for the, you know, for the lack of a better term. But when you watch this video, okay, I'm going to show you guys. This is the interview that we've watched Thanks for joining us today. Today is, uh, for the record, July 21, 2020. I'll lower it down. That's him in the bottom left, okay? This is him right above me, this guy. He looks like a scumbag. I get it. But do you know what's crazy about this? He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He doesn't know anything about, about gold mines. He doesn't know anything about mudger capital. This guy's nothing about high cross mining. Yet he was the chairman of the board. He was in charge when you saw them hire Dr. Diane Garrett. He got his money and left. These guys all took their money and left. But why, does it, why do I care so much about him? I'll tell you why I care about him in a minute. You keep David in your head, okay? I'm going to show you Bo Harbor, another board of directors at the initial starting. And just so we're clear, guys, I'm going to show you right here. The Mudrick Capital guy right here, board of directors, Victor Dunn, just another employee. David Kirsch, there he is right there, just another employee, right? But how the hell is he on the board of directors here and enjoy and other companies that he's with? He has no, he doesn't know anything. I just, I just see him. But he was a graduate at the University of Penn Wharton School, wasn't he? So Bruce Bo Harbor, okay? Just so we're clear, Bruce here married into private equity. Bruce married his wife. And his wife is here, Stephanie Scott. And she works for Centerview. Is Centerview? Centerview. And we've talked about them before. And I'll show it to you right now. Centerview Partners. Okay, and we've talked about them and how they're private equity. So not only did he marry private equity, and he is private equity. Well, that'll just tell you, and that's Bo Harbor. Uh, Bo Harbor is on the board of directors right here. Bo Harbor. All right, but let's go back to the Kirsch guy, David Kirsch. Okay, this guy, this snake in the grass. Do you know why they're doing deals with Apollo, with AMC? Why Highcroft Mining has that inside track? Does anybody know? I do. This guy is the son of Arthur S. Kirsch. And I found this out because I looked right here. I looked at his wedding photos from the New York Times. Don't worry, publicly traded information. And I went here and it says here, he is the son of Ronnie L. Kirsch and Arthur S. Kirsch of New York. And I said, Arthur S. Kirsch. Let me see. Did I see that name somewhere before? Yeah. His dad, okay, worked and was a trader worked at Drexel Burnham Lambert, okay? Drexel Burnham Lambert. Let me tell you something. If you worked at Jackson Burnham Lambert, if you were there, that means you worked with Mark Rowan, you worked with Leon Black, you worked with Josh Harris, you worked with private equity, and now their kids are the one doing the deal. David Kirsch is making millions of dollars because his father once shared a bathroom at Drexel Burnham. You think I'm crazy? You don't think that we're connecting dots? This is why I don't buy high craft mining. This is why I don't buy things that Adam Aaron touches. Anything that's private equity driven, they're already connected, guys. They've done the deal. That young man in that picture, the guy who was sitting on the board of directors of high craft mining, his father is Drexel Burnham Lambert. I'm not making it up. Do your homework. Before you buy anything with any company out there, anything, just know that the people managing your money better be on the up and up. And if they're not, well, then that's you, right? You just buy the chart or you just say, I buy the company because of a product they push. There are some great companies out there. But I'm telling you, you have to be aware of who's in charge of your money. When I look at companies like Thrive or any other companies that are once driven to the floor by Mudra Capital, Peter Till was in those companies, right? Like real big guys, guys who know things, guys who, who you would recognize and you like their name. And you see, you know what? Bruno Mars was in a company that was invested with Mudrick Capital. Man, maybe I might want to put money in with him. Nah. I'm doing all the homework I can, guys. And that was Enjoy, by the way. It wasn't Thrive. And the, the little e-cigarette company called Enjoy it had all the big boys in it years ago. They all left. And the only ones left holding it was private equity. Be careful, guys. Highcroft Mining is going to do a reverse stock split. It's going to cost people even more money because they're still going to buy it because they're still idiots. 
Dr. Diane Garrett has to get out here and put out tweets and tell everyone what it is because she wanted to paint herself in this new light, be in front of the camera. Well, enjoy the spotlight, hun. Jason Mudrick already took off with your money. And unfortunately, that's the ties to private equity. And it's a bloodline, as you can see. His best friend, David Kirsch, his dad is Drexel. Watch out. Connect all the dots you want, guys. We've been right 100% of the way. GameStop. Can't stop, won't stop. GameStop. RC Ventures buys GameStop. That's one man. That's Ryan Cohen. Get at me. Peace.